Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Yeah. Give Jesus a big, 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 big hand clap. Who is ready for an outpouring of the Spirit tonight? Who is ready to move to a new season tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Felix, thank you. Thank you. To you and your dear wife, thank you. Let's give him a big God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been having great moments in the presence of God. Um, and for those of you who were not here this morning, you'll be seated shortly. But for those of you who were not here this morning, let me encourage you to get the teaching and listen again for the purpose of growth, for the purpose of understanding. But as for this night, I assure you that your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that I like you to agree with someone by your left and right and let's pray in the spirit for a minute or two. And then we'll be seated for the word. Go ahead and pray. You are praying in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord, King of Zion, Rock of Ages, Alpha, Omega. We look to you tonight for a mighty touch. We look to you tonight to end negative seasons and open us up to seasons of prophecy, seasons of destiny. Someone is praying passionately. Those who are connected online, make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Those who are connected online. Shaprete balako sabrende gebeleke parato sibrest. Sheprati kapalato sabri geberento zibek. Jesus, our eyes are on you. 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 Someone pray. We honor you. We bless you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. From everlasting to everlasting, you are King. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 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 Now, if you came here believing God for a miracle, please, I want you to be very sensitive. If you came here tonight trusting God for a miracle, in your body i just sensed while the worship was ongoing that there was just a stream of the healing anointing and one of the ways you walk with god is to discern what he is doing hallelujah right where you are whether you are following online or you are here in this auditorium or outside i want you right now wherever you are lay your hands in that area if it's your head lay your hands on your head if it's some growth somewhere i want you to lay your hands believing the bible says he that cometh unto god can you play anything strings just a flowing sound thank you he that cometh unto god must come believing number one that he exists and then that he's a rewarder i want you to know that when you look unto jesus among the many things that happen is that you leave. When you look unto Jesus, you leave. Like the brazen altar that was lifted, the brazen serpent. And Moses mandated the people to look. And that every one of them who looked, they lived. Jesus is exalted in this place in our worship. And he wants to move over your health. 
I'm going to be praying for you right now. I believe in the power of God. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. Before we sit for the church, if this is all I do tonight, I am still satisfied. God's people must encounter a visitation. Hallelujah. So lay your hands. A growth. If you cannot walk, just lay your hands there. Let your attention be on Jesus. Exalted I above the worship of the people of the earth I see the Lord I see the Lord for my eyes have seen the King is the Lamb upon the throne who reigns forever lay your hands there Father, in the name of Jesus, ah, such an anointing. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now I want to pray for you and I want you to listen. As that word comes, I want you to receive your healing by faith. I'm going to ask those who experience the touch of Jesus will take a few minutes. And so let's have a few pastors just prepare yourselves. We'll have a few people by my left and by my right and we'll take the testimonies of miracles shortly to glorify the name of the Lord. Are you ready now? Blessed Jesus. Mm. I truly believe in the God that heals. I believe the God that delivers in the name of Jesus. Now I command every spirit of infirmity, every devil of darkness plaguing God's people by the power that raised Christ from the dead. My God, there's such deliverance, there's such healing happening right now. I decree and declare those demonic influences leave now. Those satanic influences causing sicknesses and diseases in the name of he who died and rose again, I declare be set free now. Come on, shout South Africa, be set free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I decree and declare anyone with any blood condition I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead my God be healed now the Lord is healing blood conditions be healed now in the name of Jesus if you are here and you came with a crutch or you came with a walking aid I want you to lift it and walk in the name of Jesus I want you to lift it and walk just do what I ask you to do. Lift it and walk. In the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I decree and declare every eye that is blind, total or partial blindness. Lift that crutch. Walk. 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 Look at a miracle happening in South Africa. Hallelujah. Come. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That every deaf ear hear the word of the Lord. I declare be open now. Be open now. Every blind eye receive your sight now. The Lord is dissolving all kinds of growths in the name of Jesus. All kinds of demonic growths be dissolved now. High blood pressure, it goes down now. Ulcers be healed now. Pains around the body, joints, the joint areas. I declare healing for you now. I declare healing for you now. I declare healing for you now. 
there's someone you've suffered from a serious condition of constipation this has happened again in, a, in an unusual way the power of God is touching you right now you have a sister that is suffering from kidney problems kidney problems in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is touching her wherever she is right now I'm seeing a gentleman you have a severe pain around your neck you're not able to move your neck but right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare healing life for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead piles be healed now bone problems be corrected now in the name of Jesus every kind of mental challenge psychosomatic problems I declare be healed now be healed now help that lady be healed now the healing power of Jesus is moving in this place there's a lady you came here with pain and there's a lump at multiple lumps in fact from what I see at the right side of your breast the power of God is touching you right now that devil is a liar it leaves your body now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone you have a severe pain around your leg looks like a muscle pool the power of God is touching you right now the Lord is showing me a lady you've not seen your monthly cycle for close to two years this is some satanic attack on your body in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead be restored now 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 you have a problem of severe fatigue you're not able to stand for long you are a young person but you're not able to stand for long severe pain all around your body I curse pain right now I curse pain right now now any health condition you came here with whether I mentioned it or not I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus be healed now shout a believing amen be healed now the power of God is touching many many people many many people there's someone you have a severe back problem severe back problem I feel like fire is resting upon you right now there's a supernatural miracle that is happening to you now severe back problem be healed now in the name of Jesus be healed now in the name of Jesus be healed now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we'll be taking testimonies shortly but I want to pray for a special group of people right now the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power it says he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil there are people you came here not even knowing that what is wrong with you is not really a disease it's a demonic condition are we together it's impossible to look at Jesus and then allow anything that is anti-Christ anti-grace anti-glory to remain in your life I want to pray right now the power of God comes upon men and women who have been under the siege of darkness and for such I want the ushers to bring those people out and then we'll do a, a little testimonies right now for I just want to pray and minister deliverance for someone now I stretch my hands anyone here who has been under the influence of territorial spirits influence of covenants and yokes of darkness binding destinies down I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic I decree and declare at the count of three I ask that you shout Jesus ushers please bring them out Satan you let them go in the name of Jesus it is upon Mount Zion that the Bible declares that there shall be deliverance and holiness and that the sons of Jacob will possess their possession South Africa at the count of three you will shout Jesus are you ready now one my God two three shout Jesus be released right now 
be released right now i cause devils i break curses i cause devils by the power that raised christ from the dead release their destinies now in the name of jesus christ by the power that raised christ from the dead bring them out by the anointing of the holy spirit blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against you spoke against your children spoke against your family this is mount zion i declare deliverance by the spirit of the living god every speaking of darkness binding you repetitive patterns patterns of darkness patterns of failure patterns of death patterns of weakness in the name of jesus be released now be released now be released now by the power that raised christ from the dead be released now job said you shall be delivered from six things one of it is the scourging tongues of men every evil speaking over your life programming failure programming woes be released now be released now be released now be released now my god be released now spirits of delay being tied down in one place that you're not able to make progress here at this conference i decree and declare go forward go forward go forward the chains of delay broken broken over your destiny broken over your career broken over your business spirits of poverty spirits of inheritance tying down people that they don't go forward he says son of man what seest thou and he said i saw four horns these are the horns that have exalted themselves above israel above judah and above jerusalem he said but i have sent four carpenters i come tonight as a carpenter that every horn that has tied down your life by the power of the Holy Ghost, be released now. It's time to go forward. It's time for a new chapter of your destiny to be opened. Oh, I prophesy to someone, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. I'm saying it to you as a prophetic word remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old in this season god is doing a new thing in your ministry a new thing in the life of your children a new thing in the life of your family a new thing for a businessman a new thing in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus let me speak to someone from September to December what you've not done in 10 years may my God my God may the God of my covenant make it work in your life I release that grace upon you in four months God who has shown me mercy God who has shown me help I invoke Ebenezer the helper of men enjoy help extraordinary supernatural help in the name of Jesus. Are you praying in the spirit? Are you shaking up weight? Are you shaking up burdens? It's time to fly. It's time to run like a victor that you are. House of treasures. This is a new season. Men and women of God. This is a new season ministry at another dimension the apostolic at another dimension the prophetic at another dimension intercession at another dimension
Hallelujah. Please don't be distracted. We are praying. It says, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. Everything that should have entered your hands, but was hindered by demonic operations. I come tonight as a prophetic midwife. I push it to your destiny. To your destiny. May it manifest by the power of prophecy. I push it to your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I push it to your destiny. Your eyes will see it. It will manifest speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Everyone, please pray in the spirit in one minute. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Pray in the spirit in one minute. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Please don't be distracted. In Jesus' name we pray. Please give us Genesis chapter 27 and verse 20. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You are overcome. Can you help him? Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. Look at this. I want to pray a very unique prayer. The Lord opened my eyes to see this years ago and it changed my life. This is the mystery of speed. I want you to listen. There is such a grace for speed. Watch this. When Isaac sent his sons to go and get him venison so that he will bless them. The Bible says Jacob disguised as Isaac, as Esau. And when he came to his father Isaac, listen carefully Isaac said how is it that you have found it so quickly under normal circumstances you should not be back by this time here was his answer he said because the Lord had brought it to me there are men that go to look for things but there are men that God brings it to them I speak over your life in the name of Jesus that the things others are looking for compromising for may my God bring it to you may my God bring men to you in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. now I pray for all those in front I use them as a point of contact that every demonic thing that has, has kept your life down here at House of Treasures we decree and declare the Son has set you free therefore we declare you are free indeed you are free indeed you are free indeed free to testify free to advance free to make progress in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. I decree and declare over all those in front here by the power that raised Christ from the dead. We declare your deliverance perfected. 
you will never be victims of what you've been delivered from we release you go and excel in jesus name we pray return to your states rejoicing let's give jesus a big hand Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You forever. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. I'm still seeing the Lord touch sick people. I'm seeing someone you're not able to bend so well you have very severe pain very severe pain I cause that pain now the name of Jesus Christ she's on a um, she's not able to walk make sure she doesn't fall in the name of Jesus I cause that spirit out of her now in the name of Jesus I release you by the power that raised Christ from the dead let strength return to you and every ordinance of darkness responsible for this satanic thing I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ who brought her she came on her own in the name of Jesus I release you let her be when she's fine let her attempt to walk the name of Jesus Christ listen let me tell you this let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen hear me without the power of the Holy Spirit we remain noisemakers it is the power of God that brings validation that someone comes to church and returns back home as a testimony not with a testimony as a testimony and when men ask you where are you coming from you will tell them the house of God there are things that only happen in the house of God are we together now in the name of Jesus every pain I'm feeling a very sharp pain right here at the side this is someone's pain you are being healed of it now in the name of Jesus Christ you are being healed of it now there is someone there's some noise you are hearing at the right side of your ear don't worry when when if you are not able to stand just let them be when God is done with what he's doing they stand up it's a miracle service hallelujah very severe pain you know how you, we, we used to on these old televisions and that that initial noise before transmission begins that's that's the kind of noise that someone has been hearing in the name of Jesus I declare you are healed right now you are healed right now I feel stirred in my heart to pray for someone trusting God for the fruit of the womb now listen 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 don't, don't just rush out carelessly um, I'm going to use not everybody we cannot have that time but there is a lady here I don't know if you are here with your husband but I'm seeing the number four four years four years for my god people will carry children by this time next year miracle children if you've not been able to have a child i want you to open up yourself you're about to receive listen look at me don't get used to people playing games on god's altar and believe that every time someone mounts the pulpit and you watch the supernatural in motion it is some games there are people who have seen God there are people who fear God are we together it's embarrassing but it's safe to make these kinds of disclaimers because there is a collection of people having different kinds of spiritual experiences unless you confuse what Jesus is doing by what you probably are used to seeing let me tell you the truth just because people have made merchandise of the gospel and the things of the spirit does not mean every spiritual operation is a lie open up your heart to receive and allow God to change your story Amen. hallelujah 
I'm hearing the name of your wife, but it is not your wife. Who has her name? The Lord wants to speak to a lady. I'm hearing the name of your wife, Apostle Felix, but it's not her. But the lady has the same name as the name, yes, Bulelwa. Is there someone with that name? The Lord wants to speak to you. If you, are, if you are such a person, please make sure if it's not your name, don't worry. If, you, if the person is following online, we have an audience even online. But the Lord is asking me because I saw light and I'm, I'm, I know it's not, it's not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. I want to pray for you. I don't know how long you've trusted God for the fruit of the womb. And I don't know the condition behind it. But hear me. Truly, there is a name above every other name. I want you to believe this. And I can tell you, 90 to 99% of barrenness issues are demonic. You trust me. This is my area. Are we together now? I want to pray for you. That at this conference you will not forget you will never never forget that God visited you here Amen. hallelujah Genesis chapter 21 please give it to us very quickly verse 1 and 2 we are praying I hope I'm not wasting your time and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken Shout verse 2 together for them. One, two, go. Stop. Stop. How did the Lord visit her? By giving her the grace for conception. Are we together? Verse 2 again. And Sarah conceived. At the set time. I want to pray for you. I respect medicine. I respect doctors. My dear, are you the one with the same name? What's your name? Huh? Okoye. Stand. Stand, my dear. The Lord is changing your story. Listen to me. You will marvel and wonder at what the anointing will do in your life. I stretch my hands. Step into a new season. You will never be the same again. Never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I know not everyone may be able to come out. Don't feel bad if you are not able to come out. These ones are enough. But right where you are, believe God. Believe God. For God's sake, believe God. Master, we have toiled all night. He said, now let me pray. The spirits behind barrenness, I come as one sent. Let God's people go now. I curse every demonic influence responsible for barrenness out of their lives now. Out of their lives now. Out of their lives now. I release you in the name of Jesus that everything that has held you down Causing miscarriages. Habarakatabaratosia. Causing miscarriages. You take in but you lose the child. You take in but you lose the child. You take in but you lose the child. I release you now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Now I decree and declare. For husband and wife. According to the time of life. Return with your children. Come on, are we agreeing with them? Return with your children by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Return with your children. Return with your children. Where it has failed, go back again. This time around with this anointing. And may God honor you. May God honor you. Everything that needs to be corrected in your body, may it be corrected now. Corrected in the husband, may it be corrected now corrected in the wife may it be corrected now in the name of Jesus Christ please return back to your seats rejoicing
Hallelujah. I feel stirred in my heart to pray for a special group of people. And I'm just, I'm just acting as the Spirit of God. If I'm not able to teach anything, no problem. I'll still be alive next year. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are people here who are in serious debt, financial situations. I'm not saying to come out. And I'm not saying that if you want money. I'm talking of people who are in trouble. Are we together? I will pray increase. Increase is different from deliverance from financial calamity. I want to pray for you. I'm talking of people, it doesn't matter how you got there. A bad investment, defrauded, it doesn't matter how you got there. But there is an unction tonight. <laughs> Despise not prophesying. You will marvel and wonder. I know you are intelligent. But you see, when you get into financial problems, it's not intelligence that brings you out. It is prophecy. He said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for a family, a business, a corporation that is in Aparato Shalika Parondo Theater. You are in serious financial problems. And as it stands right now, help is not coming from anywhere. And you've made up your mind that you will not compromise. But the consequence is that trouble is imminent. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God raise strange helpers to stand by you. May my God raise strange helpers to stand by you. Some of them strangers you have never met. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to rebuke a spirit. There is a lady here. You are a number of ladies in your family. It's like there is a spirit. Nobody marries and remains in their parents, their, their husband's home. Something must happen and return them back to their family. You are about to be delivered now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Every orchestration of darkness that will not allow marriages stand in South Africa. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how decent the marriage is. Something will always happen and return you back to your parents' homes. Weep not for the book is open. The lion of the tribe of Judah is worthy to open the book and to unlock the scroll you see believers look at me let me teach you something do you know why the bible mandates that we be compassionate not everybody's problem is out of carelessness are we together now the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren let the lady sit please don't pressure her let 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 her sit hallelujah the bible tells us the end of Jabez's story then it says that he was named Jabez as a baby because the mother bore him in sorrow she named him Jabez and the bible says one day Jabez got angry and he said God we need to talk I didn't participate in the pain that I may have caused my mother but I've been a victim of her speakings it says Jabez cried to the Lord and said oh that thou wouldest bless me thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast and that you will keep me from evil and he said a number of things and the Bible says the Lord heard him my dear sisters look at me let me tell you this hear me truly God delivers. Are we together? Do you know that there are wicked spirits that make sure good people marry terrible people? 
that you will see a good lady and be seeing something else you will see a good man and be seeing something else then the devil will orchestrate demonic forces and you get yourself into trouble this is what happens when we see Jesus now the Lord is that spirit the Bible says I see many of you crying it's a representation of your pain but listen let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen Jesus is able to bring an end he says come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden he says I will give you rest can I pray for you now yes you Yeshua, Yeshua. Now I decree and declare, believers, hear me in the name of Jesus, the captain of our salvation, the one who translated us from darkness to light everyone here under any spell that makes women or men in any case because listen the fact that there are women here does not mean it's only women it's not a women's problem are we together now i decree and declare every orchestration of darkness frustrating you i declare be released now be released now Amen. be released now Amen. look what I'm seeing I'm seeing a veil like a bride but it's a black veil and I'm not even seeing her face this is what I'm seeing that garment of shame let it be torn apart now 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 that garment of shame in the name of Jesus, the Bible says to give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I decree and declare over you and your siblings here connected. Every garment of shame. Be released right now in Jesus' name. Your homes be released right now. Your homes be released right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you, by reason of this prayer, let there be supernatural reconciliations. Supernatural reconciliations. Every husband who is a prodigal husband roaming away by demonic spirit wherever they are we restore their sanity and we restore them back home Amen. we restore their sanity we restore them back home we restore their sanity we restore them back home in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I decree and declare be released now every one of you let it be over now in the name of Jesus return to your seats rejoicing please return to your seats rejoicing return to your seats rejoicing return to your seats rejoicing Yeshua, Yeshua, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Lord 
is going to be raising women in South Africa. Listen, please, listen, 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 please listen, please listen. Sometimes we don't hear a prophetic word and then even when we say amen, we, our amen is not constructive because we've not yet understood what God is saying. There are women who are going to be raised in South Africa and there are three areas. Number one is prophetic intercession. I'm going to release these graces. Number two, entrepreneurship. Women who will rise like 10 men as one single woman. Do you believe this? Number three, education. This is what the Lord is telling me. Men, I will pray for you, but let's focus on the women now. Let me repeat myself again. God is going to raise women and uniquely anoint them in the area of prophetic intercession. And everyone here who is called into this ministry of prophetic intercession, may that grace, I stretch my hands from this altar right now, receive an outpouring of that grace. Fan your secret place back to flames. You don't have to bring them out. Don't worry, my dear people. You don't have to bring them out. Just guide them right where they are. From the back to the front, from the left to the right, every daughter of Zion, every daughter of Abraham, called to understand the mystery of warfare and intercession. I empower you by the anointing. I empower you by the anointing. Pray the prayer that shifts climates. Pray the prayer that changes seasons. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Quite honestly, I don't know how women fare in terms of business and entrepreneurship in South Africa. I've not taken time to ask. But since this is what the Lord has told me, I want to pray. There are women whose hands are about to be anointed in a mighty way. I decree and declare to a woman who will single-handedly rise as a kingdom financier, frontiering the course of the kingdom. You may be ordinary now, my beloved sister, but don't undermine what the anointing can do. I pray for you by the anointing of the Spirit of the living God. Some of you in one year, God will shift you. In one year, you will be employers of labor. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Ideas, witty inventions. Ideas, witty inventions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, let me tell you this. The prophetic is very powerful. It deposits grace upon your life and creates the climate that makes that grace work. I'm saying it again to a daughter of Abraham. You may be alone now limited not even knowing anything about entrepreneurship but because it has so pleased the lord to single you out and to place grace upon you beginning from tonight may your eyes see what others don't see in the name of jesus and then number three education there are some of you who on account of this impartation you will not rest till you stretch to the highest level intellectually speaking and God will make that happen for a reason so that it will empower you to sit strategically across certain strategic educational seats and then you legislate on behalf of the kingdom this is for everybody but I'm speaking particularly to ladies because it is what the Lord is ministering to me I pray in the name of Jesus not for everyone but for someone here, you may look ordinary, but may my God take you to the highest educational level possible. 
you will brainstorm with captains of industry you will brainstorm with giants of nations presidents prime ministers ambassadors in the name of jesus christ for some of you here institutions will call you and they will seek you to create models models in the name of jesus christ said be the name of Jesus let me pray one prayer for the man before we sit down this is not God telling me this is by desire in my heart let me tell you something in Africa listen carefully this is for everybody the whole world is following but let me speak to my people Africa there is a spirit of late establishment listen carefully with all due respect there are many parts of the world that when you go as teenagers you will see young teenagers already established in Africa it seems to be a cause to be established on time I'm not talking of fraud um, and scam I don't know what you call it in South Africa but the general name is fraud yeah I'm not talking of people who are involved in those, those nonsense I'm talking of the dignity of kingdom integrity do you know it is a cause to spend all your days looking for money it's not just a cause it's a distraction you will never be able to serve God in spirit and truth you have heard me say there is only one reason why Israel goes to Egypt hunger not hunger for spiritual things hunger hardship what took the sons of Jacob to Egypt until they became slaves for 430 years was hunger There's a miracle happening there. Hey! Please take it easy on her so she doesn't hurt herself. Hey! There's a miracle happening there. Are you seeing what the Lord is doing? Come on, South Africa. She came on this wheelchair. Look at you can even see a cast. Glory! Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this. I decree and declare yes, that everything that is not working in your life, by reason of this service, may it begin to work now. May it begin to work now. May it begin to work now. When I say rise up and walk, I'm not just saying rise up from the wheelchair. Some of you, it is rise up from shame and walk. Some of you, it is rise up from poverty and walk. Rise up from mediocrity and walk. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy unto you, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Let the devil see the wheelchair again. Over South Africa, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I declare perfection over this woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Everything in your life that has refused to walk, I'm saying it again. I prophesy to you, rise up and walk. Someone said, rise up and walk. Man of God, rise up and walk yes, businessman rise up and walk yes, student rise up and walk in the name of jesus rise up and walk rise up and walk in government rise up and walk in your ministry rise up and walk hallelujah I'm seeing a crutch in my vision, like a, um, what they call it now, that walking aid. I just saw it in my vision, lifted. I don't know who else has it, but since I saw it, let me just announce it. Hallelujah. My sister, look at me. How long has this been? 
you broke your leg? Yes, I what? broke one leg in front. Oh, you broke one? Yes. In the name of Jesus, oh, I, I can see a cast on one. In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfects this. And I decree and declare you will never be grounded. The Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is broken. In Jesus' mighty name, you are her brother. You are her, oh, you, you are just a good usher. May God bless you. Let's give our ushers, house of treasure ushers, a big God bless you. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Now listen, please let her return back to her seat rejoicing. We give Jesus praise. Now, look at this. She's going back without the wheelchair. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hold on. Is there someone with the name Regina? Regina. Regina. I, I've heard this name and I kept quiet. Regina. Regina, run. Right. Your season has come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All yes, the sir. glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh. Hold on. Regina, all of you, I'm going to pray for you. Your brother is currently on admission in the hospital. I'm seeing a gentleman lying down, currently on admission in the hospital. Who is that person? Where is he? Please give her the mic. He's at, at, in case at end the Bay Hospital, and my mother is Regina. Is your mother is Regina? Yes. And your brother is in the hospital. Yes. You are the one I'm talking about. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You brought my mind. No, 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 no. Please don't put them under pressure. Huh? When we pray. Now listen, let me tell you something about healing. Don't put people under pressure. When they tell you, theirs is to hear the word and receive the word. When they are ready to act, you will help them. But if you put them under pressure, they are going to be discouraged. You understand? So take back my mind. You just keep praying over her. Don't put her under pressure. Are we together? You're Regina. Your brother. My mother is Regina. Hold on, please. Your mom is Regina. Yes. The, your brother, where is he? In hospital. In the hospital. Yes. Which hospital? The Bay Hospital in is, KZN. Is there, is there a hospital like that? <laughs> my apologies, my dear sister. Sometimes we do these things because... You know, sometimes people think we just stand here and, and guess nonsense. You can't guess in the crowd like this. You will make a fool of yourself. And um, I love Jesus. I respect him, but I respect myself too. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I will not, I will not stand here and, and waste my time. I'd rather teach quietly and then go and sit down. <laughs> But if you do that, you rob people of receiving their miracle. My dear, what's his name? It's Kulani. Okay. I'm going to pray for you and pray for him. And I want you to know that the power of God will touch him. You believe that? <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands over this precious lady. I use her as a point of contact to pray for her mom, Regina and her brother by your mercy touch her touch this family we decree and declare that the gentleman will not die may god preserve his health we have prayed for him as the church and we receive his miracle we receive perfection in jesus name i pray amen and for all of you because you came nobody comes to jesus and goes back the same my dear are you married? I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Yeah. 
I don't know you. I've never seen you. I was invited to come and preach in South Africa. But young lady, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare because the Lord has spoken. I don't know what your desires are, but in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Number one, you will not marry a foolish man. Number two, you will not marry a wicked man. Number three, you will not marry an unbeliever. I'm saying this to you because God showed me one again. You will not marry a foolish man. You will not marry a wicked man. You will not marry an unbeliever. I pray for you. Let grace rest upon you. And may God bring his word to pass. Receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for everyone who is here. May my God meet you at the various points of your need. He brought you out here. May he honor you. In Jesus name. The spirit of prophecy is coming on a pastor. The, a pastor. I'm not just talking you're a believer, but you're a pastor. In the name that is above all names. When, when um, the men of God were being honored here, I saw a number of pastors lift their hands. That's why it's good for pastors to come for conferences like this. There are things that will not come and meet you in your church. And let me be honest with you, sometimes it is pride that cheats a lot of people. When God grants grace, it is for everyone. He says at the third, the last day of the feast, he said, if anyone is thirsty. You know, sometimes we complicate things for ourselves. When you see God moving, open up your spirit and receive. A pastor, I'm saying this. Men of God, you will not go back the way you came in Jesus' name. Number one, let me say this up front, that for every man of God here, I honor you as touching whatever you are doing for the kingdom here. So ministering and ministering to pastors is in no way downplaying the exploits you have done for the kingdom. I'm not one of those people who will come and disregard your sacrifice. I'm only here for three days and then I'm gone. You see that now. But there are people who labor in this city even when we are not here. They are the reasons why you came. And it will be immature to ignore the spiritual sacrifices of the intercessors, the men, the women of God. When we come like this, it is not to outshine. We come as agents of mercy. Are we together now? That in addition to what God is doing in your life, that grace be added upon grace. Grace be added upon grace. Grace and peace can multiply. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus, I'm still seeing this thing again. There is a man of God. You are a pastor. Truly, you are called into the prophetic. But you've, you've resisted all kinds of temptations. But you've been praying. Lord, you have called me. Let this grace rest on me. Your life is about to change now. God wants to show you that he honors integrity. You can step into the prophetic by dignity and by righteousness. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. When you manipulate God's people, it is wickedness. When you lie, you tell lies, you do it, it is wickedness. I'm not condemning, but the truth is the truth. And if you are here and you are practicing anything in ministry that is not of God, I don't condemn you. Change tonight. I love you, but change for God's sake. Let's take away some of these garbages out of the church and that God will be served in spirit and truth. That when people come to church, let them know they are safe. I'm not one of those people who will point us insulting and condemning. I don't do such. Some people got into those, some of these schemings as a result of poor mentorship. But it doesn't matter whether it is poor or whatever it is. Now that you have seen the light. Huh? The Bible says that was the true light. I'm speaking to everyone but particularly to those in ministry. If you found yourself going the way of compromise. Please hear it from me. Joshua Selman is speaking to you. I do not condemn you. No, I will not. No matter if, if, if it doesn't matter. You carry the charm on your head. You, I will not condemn you. I love you but change. We don't condemn, but we don't condone. 
change. Get those things out. If you need to see a man of God, there are seasoned men of God here. Open up so that you will be helped, rehabilitated, and reabsorbed into the army properly. And let me use the opportunity to challenge younger ministers who are coming up. Respect everybody, but be wise in following. Did you hear me? Don't, don't, don't join. Ah, this apostolic thing is on me now. Listen, don't join any campaign to point fingers, to insult, to demean. You will never win that way. I'm saying this to you. South Africa, hear me. If you honor the grace upon my life, then listen and learn. By the grace of God, we have come a bit with God. And our track record is there to show. You will never win by joining the heads of people, insulting people. It doesn't mean there are no issues to deal with. Don't get me wrong. I am not by, by this endorsing licentiousness. There are many things. This is why God is putting conferences like this. To correct, to adjust. Even if a bride is wounded, she's still a bride. Are we together now? So... I refer you to the prophetic word I started my session with. Young ministers, when you see things that are wrong, number one, thank God that you found the truth. And then number two, intercede sincerely for those you know who are in error and where God grants you grace and you have access and you can speak to them in love. My brother, would you want to consider doing ministry properly? Maybe it was the pursuit for money or fame, but there is a more excellent way, the way of righteousness. By the time they become hardened, God himself knows what to deal with, how to deal with rebellion. Are we together now? But the campaign of pointing fingers and insulting and walking in self-righteousness is a loser's approach to ministry. You will not win that way. You will not win that way. Hallelujah. There is one thing I know. Love never fails. Say that South Africa. Love, love never, never fails. One last time. Love never fails. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. So my fellow co-laborers in the gospel here in South Africa, God is calling for a purified bride. I believe South Africa, like other parts of Africa and across the globe, God is calling people. The Bible says, let him that steal, steal no more. It's not in your Bible. So it is time for people to begin to retrace their steps and to value righteousness. The way of condemnation is not the way of victory. However, however, it matters that people become serious with God. Do not desecrate God's altar because of carelessness. Men and women of God, with all due respect, let us not turn the altar of the Lord to a place of merchandise or a place of games where we waste the time of responsible people in the name of coming to church. You see, let me tell you, there are certain members God will never give you if you are not serious. No responsible man of influence will carry his wife and children and family and risk his reputation to waste his time under any priesthood. People are serious. Not everybody is joking. I don't know why God is moving in this direction. You see that I've not preached. If this is all God wants me to do, I am satisfied. I will do it and go and sit down. <laughs> Younger ministers rising, let me encourage you. Let me tell you how to do ministry right. Look unto Jesus. Look onto worthy models and then be patient. This pursuit for instant gratification is why many people collide with Satan. Are we together? God gives speed, but he does not rush people. It is the manifestation that is fast, not the training. The training takes a long time. Be patient. Don't compare yourself with any other man of God. Be patient. When you see God moving someplace, celebrate it sincerely. When you have your reservations, live in peace. Don't tear people 
and it's, it's not the way of the spirit. The final thing I will say to men of God, have mutual respect one for another. Men of God in South Africa, respect yourselves. Hallelujah. And that respect must be to superiors, contemporaries, and subordinates. If you respect only those higher than you, you are a hypocrite. Because you've already seen what they will become. The ones rising, you've not yet seen what they will become. Are we together now? Young people, never see the fathers of faith in the land and then insult them and tear them down using the guise of revelation or power is childishness. It takes more than revelation to have stature in the spirit. There are people who may not be able to preach like you, but they have demonstrated integrity for decades. And there are many young people who have not built anything. They've not raised anybody. They've not done anything at all. Don't join the campaign of noisemakers. Respect the testimony of consistency. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's important. Men of God, let's respect ourselves. If God has given you a great ministry, like Apostle Felix, doing great things, or God has given you five members, every one of those five members is worth the blood of Jesus. Teach them with integrity. Teach them with integrity. Labor in the spirit. Love them with all your heart. Pour your heart to teach them. When God is marking your script, you will be marked against those he gave you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm just going to give a charge and then I will end here. I sense in my spirit that the Lord has decided to come tonight as a refiner's fire. Hallelujah. The finest fire. The finest fire. The finest fire. Refiner's fire. Wives, respect your husbands. Don't listen to nonsense on social media. Respect your husbands. Don't allow frustrated people mentor you. Respect your husbands. Respect still works. By the mercies of God. Husbands, the Bible declares that you honor your wife. Don't treat them as rags because they said yes to you. Children, you curse your parents. Remember, you are growing. Are we together? You are growing. And based on what I've read in the Bible, a harvest is always greater than the seed. So by the time you insult your parents and cause them pain because you have money or because you have grown, they may grow old and pass but remember that you will also grow old i don't know why god is deciding to come this way but just just allow the lord do what he's doing in our lives hallelujah let me speak to every young man here if you are lazy and you are not doing anything when i'm praying and prophesying open up your heart and your hands and receive and by tomorrow go and settle down if you don't have anything to do look for someone who is winning and learn from him. If you don't have a job and you are not learning, you are proud. This is how nations are changed. Nations are changed by introducing scripture-based value systems. This is the advantage of influence. When you have the ears and the hearts of people, you do not take it for granted, but you communicate truths from church that translates into nation building. This is apostolic Christianity. That at the end of a conference like this, you do not just live healed and delivered, but you live with a renewed orientation that crime rate drops after a conference like this. That prostitution drops after a conference like this. You see that? Now, those of you who are in government here, you can go back and tell the people, we have seen that after every conference like this, South Africa goes forward. This is the value of the church as light. We are not a nuisance to society, but it matters what we teach people. We must teach respect. We must teach dignity. We must teach godliness. We must teach responsibility. 
every thief in high place was once a child and every time you allow error to grow it multiplies are we together praise the name of the lord i want us to pray you've been standing let me just fulfill a promise i made in the morning and then we're out of here please now sit some of you forgot you were standing I may not have the time now to teach you what I wanted to teach you. Forgive me. God will grant grace and will teach again. But yesterday I told you or this morning that I will share with you the three assignments of Jesus. When Jesus was sent by the Father to the earth, he came to fulfill a threefold mandate. And please, I want you to listen very carefully. Number one. The first assignment of Jesus whilst he walked upon the earth was to be an explanation and a correction to our understanding of God. Because until Jesus manifested, we only knew God in types and shadows. And we had to depend on the insight of prophets or individuals who had unique encounters with God to explain God to us. Are we together? The possibility of a widespread personal encounter was not there. Even for a nation like Israel, God's covenant people, God had to single out individuals like Moses and then reveal dimensions of himself to, him, to them and then they would in turn reveal to the people. So when you read your Bible, you will see many things that people said God was Many things that the prophet said God would, was to do or, or was doing. And many things were credited to God. And I hope you know that many of those people came from several practices of idolatry. And when they came into the encounter meeting Jehovah, some of them incorporated some of those heathenistic practices in their work. And it affected their understanding of God. Are we together? So when Jesus walked upon the earth, he came as a marking script. He came as a reference to help us learn God and to help us know God properly. So everything the Bible tells us God did or God was, we would have to look at the life of Jesus for verification. For instance, if the Bible said the Lord is gracious and compassionate, it says, slow to anger and rich in love. How do we know that the prophet did not lie? We look at Jesus. Was Jesus gracious? Was Jesus compassionate? Was Jesus slow to anger? Was Jesus rich in love? Then we know that statement about God was true. Are we together? When the Bible says, I have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness have I drawn you. How are we sure that God was not lying to us? We look at Jesus. When he walked upon the earth as God incarnate, did he love people? Did he reach out to people? Yes. Including children. He said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for, for such is the kingdom of God. Are we together now? When the Bible calls God Jehovah Jireh, we have a right to doubt him until we look at Jesus. Realize that Jesus held a crusade once upon a time like this. And after three days, he looked at the people and he said, don't let them go back this way because he was Jireh. I need to, there must be a witness of my ability to provide. And he said, feed them. The goal was not just compassion. It was to validate that God was provider. And he provided meals for them. They ate and even left some and all went back rejoicing. So we know of a truth that God provides. The Bible says God is merciful. How do we know that is correct? We look at Jesus. Now, But there are many other things that prophets said God was that we do not find captured in Jesus. I stated that in the morning. For instance, you would read things like a lying spirit came out from the Lord. That was an erroneous communication because when we check Jesus, the first thing the Bible says about him in John 1 is that when he came and was manifest in the flesh, he was full of grace and truth. No guile, no deception. Are we together? So that gives us the credence to question the statement that the prophet made that a lying spirit could not have come from God. It is inconsistent with his character. Are we learning now? 
the first reason why Jesus came was to help us understand God, an accurate representation of God. And don't forget that God himself spoke a verdict about Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he said, hear ye him. In other words, trust whatever he says. He is my recommended model for knowing me, for learning me. The second reason why Jesus came was to become an agent of reconciliation. The Bible tells us that on account of the original sin of man that was transmuted through the blood, all men became sinners. Are we together now? He says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So Jesus was sent as a representation of the Father's love to mankind and creation. He came to reconcile us, reconciling the world to the Father through himself. He came as the mediator, the Bible says, of the new covenant. He came as the Savior, the propitiation. And he came to redeem. The word redeem means to buy back by paying a price. This is the second reason why Jesus came. It's important that as we look unto him, we know why he has made himself available to us to bring reconciliation, reconciliation, salvation. Here's how the Bible puts it. Jesus was teaching Nicodemus. He says, for God so loved the world, John chapter 3, that he gave his only begotten son. Then he says that whosoever, this blessing is for whosoever, ladies and gentlemen, whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He's after salvation. There is no other name under heaven given unto man by which we must be saved. So when you understand this assignment of Jesus, it also becomes an extension of your own assignment. That you become a point of reconnection and reconciliation. Are we together? Drawing men to Jesus. You don't have to be a man of God. You just need to understand the assignment of Jesus. The business of soul winning is not a business for preachers alone. The business of cooking is not for chefs alone. It is for all men who can be hungry. There are professionals called chefs. But everybody who is interested in longevity must find a way of learning how to cook or knowing somebody who knows how to cook. Hopefully your wife or your husband or your child. Are we together now? That's how it is. So do not leave the business of salvation just to preachers. No. There are 8.2 billion people on earth. South Africa, hear me. I don't know how many people are in South Africa and what's the ratio of the people who are now saved. But I know statistically, at least as, as, as presented, that we have a little over 2.6 billion people on earth who are professing Christians. Look at the margin. And yet we say we're in the end times. Yet we say, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Is it not in your Bible that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the earth? It is only then that the end will come. If the end comes now, what about your husband? If the end comes now, what about your wife? If the end comes now, what about your son, your daughter? If the end comes now, what about your relative? The Bible says books were open and another book was open which was the book of life and that every man was judged according to the works there and that whose name was not found in the book of life he was cast into the lake of fire. These are not parables. A day will come the earth will be judged. It is true. He that rejects Christ is already condemned. Your judgment is already there. There's nothing else to ask you. If you reject Jesus Christ are you seeing how serious this is? It's not just the business of evangelists. You must know that Jesus came, number two, to reconcile men. Therefore, every one of the thousands of people here represented and the thousands of others across the globe, if it is true that you love Jesus, your life must be a contributor to bringing souls to the kingdom. You can pray. You can pay. 
you can go. You are winning souls. There are others who may not have the courage to go, but they can support the work of the kingdom. There are others who will stay behind as intercessors, praying and proclaiming a climate of favor whilst we travel preaching the gospel. The third reason why Jesus came is that Jesus walked upon the earth and I want you to please listen. He came as a model, a pattern. This is what we've been discussing all through from yesterday. He came as a model, a pattern to show us how God intends for us to live and to run this race. Did you get that? He came as a model. Doesn't matter whether you're a businessman, whether you're a man of God, whether you're a family man, doesn't matter whether you're a parent, whether you're a student, whether you're a businessman, you can find your destiny when you look at Jesus. And he has been able to model for you that you can live a life of excellence. You can serve the purposes of the kingdom with the dignity of kingdom integrity. So Jesus came as a pattern. He walked upon the earth as a pattern. <clears throat> the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you. South Africa, house of treasures, please listen. Let this mind, the word let means permit this mind, to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a consciousness. There was a mindset. There was an orientation that Jesus had. And that when you look to Jesus, you must be able to draw from him to your life. The requisite mindset that makes for a victorious Christian life. And all of those mindsets are encapsulated in a mystery called the four living creatures. Please listen. In Revelation chapter 4, when you read from verse 2 down to verse 10, John was caught up and he began to see the throne. And when he was given access to the throne room, the Bible tells us that John saw a very mysterious um, manifestation in the throne room. He saw four living creatures. And he gave us a very graphic description. Ezekiel also saw that in chapter 1. But then his description was slightly different. Please listen. What John saw is a lesson to every believer. If you understand these four dimensions, then you will be able to manifest the Christ in excellence. It is a mindset it is an orientation. Listen very carefully. Number one, he saw one with the face of a lion. The face of a lion. It is not everything in the throne room reflects the Christ. Let me tell you that. As mysterious as those creatures or those elders are, everything in the throne room is a reflection of the glory of God. There is a lesson. I'm giving a chart so I don't want to tempt myself going to fetch out scriptures. But you just listen. The face of the lion represents kingship, royalty, dominion. The Bible says we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. That means when you come into Christ, the first mindset you must sustain is the mindset of dominion. That you are a king. Are we together now? The mindset of royalty. That means you learn how to speak like Jesus. Because the Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. If you do not sustain the mindset of dominion as revealed in the face of a lion, you cannot be a reflection of the Christ to your world. Are we together now? The face of a lion represents dominion. There's no fear. You are indomitable. The Bible says we've been made unto our God kings and priests and that we reign upon the earth. Show me a man who has encountered that mindset represented by the face of a lion. I show you a man who is fearless. I show you a confident person. It is an antidote to low self-esteem. That it doesn't matter my background. Now I realize that I'm a king. I am royalty. 
I am royalty. I am royalty. You must burn it in your heart. I am royalty. You stand tall. You walk tall. Are we together? The face of the lion. It's not an object. It's not an animal. It's a mindset. Listen carefully. The face of a lion is, an, is a mindset. It's an orientation. That's why we started by talking about the mind of Christ. But I have something to tell you. There is a side effect to pursuing only that mindset. If you pursue only the mindset of dominion and royalty and power, confidence will soon become overconfidence. The side effect of having that mindset alone is pride. You call a collection of lions together a pride of lions. Listen carefully. Are we together now? There are believers who have seen this dimension of God. Royalty, power. You hear them talk so confident. They did not know when they delved into pride and overconfidence. The balance to that mindset is the face of the next creature. The calf. The face of the calf shows you that in addition to royalty, the purpose of dominion is servanthood are we together now so the next mindset you must have if you want to represent the purposes of Christ is that you realize that no matter how high God lifts me giving me power dominion the consciousness of royalty is tamed by the consciousness of service you are a calf Jesus came among us and he said he came to serve he did not hide the fact that he was a servant. Are we together now? Yes. So in addition to having the mindset of royalty, I cannot beg you are right, but you must be careful. If that is the only mindset of Christ you have, you will misrepresent the image of the invisible God. You also need to learn the heart of a calf. You learn their humility. A calf allows itself, no matter how big it is, it allows itself to be constrained so that it will plod the land. It says, by the strength of an ox is much increased. You want to bring increase to the kingdom? It will take more than dominion consciousness. You need the consciousness of service. Who is learning? Now. But that mindset of a calf also has a side effect. Because men will take advantage of your humility. They will take advantage of your humility until they wound you a thousand times. The balance to that mindset is the next face, the face of a man. It reminds you that even though you are royalty, even though you serve, you are a man. It reminds you of your, your humanity. Are we together? The Bible tells us the word became flesh and dwelt among us, we beheld his glory, even the glory as of the begotten. The Bible said in John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept, your Jesus. The Bible tells us Jesus was hungry. He didn't hide it. The Bible tells us Jesus slept on his way to a crusade ground. He was tired, he slept. One day he was hungry, he came to a fig tree. The fig tree deceived him, transformation without empowerment. When he arrived there, he saw that the tree did not have result, even though it had green leaves. He cursed it in anger. Jesus was angry. He went into the temple one day and he saw people exchanging, doing a lot of things. He took a whip and whipped all of them and said, my, it is written that my father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of robbers. Let's follow the progression. So you are royalty, a king, mighty great it's an orientation that comes from looking unto jesus but lest you be overtaken by pride and overconfidence and to look down on others to your perdition he reminds you that for everyone who is honored by god the purpose is service and that there is a side effect to bending over to serve people will take advantage of you are we together now? They will take advantage of your humility. We live in a bedeviled world. If they find a loophole in your life through humility, they will stretch it until you are wounded. I'm sure many of you have sad stories of people who took advantage of you because of humility. 
and then he reminds you that you are a man. You know what that means? Your humanity is not something to be embarrassed about. Humanity does not mean weakness. It must be factored into your knowing Jesus. Like I always say, when you are tired, sleep. When you are hungry, eat. Are we together now? You need quality strategic relationships even though you are born of God. Loneliness can depress you like demons because you are alone. Most believers feel embarrassed to allow their humanity find expression. When you lose a loved one, say, no, I won't cry. I'm, no, 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 no. It's okay. Jesus wept. Oh, man of God, you were supposed to come for the meeting. Ah, well, I was having a slide. The Holy Spirit, mm -mm, you slept. You slept. It's okay, you slept. Are we together now? You were tired from the crusade and you slept. It's all right. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, why did you shout that time? Ah, well, God is helping me. Not, not uh, something came. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Don't lie. Don't blame God for. You, you know, this, the re because we have refused to allow that humanity find expression. I'm not talking about the, the evil tendencies of our human nature. It is beautiful when men can see your humanity. It helps them to glorify God more. Because they see the difference between you and the excellency of power that works in you. I'll tell you this. Not to endorse licentiousness, but one of the reasons why men of God go through a lot of pressure is because we have so hidden our humanity, people think we are not humans. So the day you are angry or hungry or something, they say, ah, you too? And then you are now embarrassed and say, well, uh, I, I usually don't eat. God just allowed me. You just found me in a restaurant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man of God for you. The man is watching a movie to entertain himself. Maybe he's just been fatigued. And then the next day, he just turns and he's praying in tongues. Finish your movie. <laughs> Provided it's not a demonic antichrist movie. Are we learning? Now, but hear me. There is also a side effect to keeping that mindset. When you become overly conscious of your humanity, it will graduate to carnality. And the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, it says, is life and peace. So you'll find people who endorse their, yes, I'm, I'm human. Yes, I shouted. I will even slap you till tomorrow. I'm human. Mm -mm. That means you are stretching it out of proportion. Are we together now? And the remedy for that lapse is found in the last phase, the flying eagle. That even though you are human, you are divine. All other faces end upon the land, but the eagle flies. Hmm. That they that wait upon the Lord, even though they are humans, they shall renew their strength. Your Bible says they shall mount up with wings as the eagle they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint so it is true that you are human and when people want to focus on your humanity you remind them that even though i am human i am in partnership with a divine spirit called the spirit of god it makes all the difference oh you are just an ordinary person i agree but not when the Holy Spirit comes into partnership with me. That word ordinary should not be used in my life again. Ordinary before his arrival, you are right, but not after he comes. I am always extraordinary and supernatural. Are we together? The face of a lion, dominion, royalty, power. The face of a calf, servanthood, translating to humility and the consciousness of service. The face of a man, your humanity, that you can feel pain, you can be weak, you can be tired, you can be fatigued, and that it is not unspiritual to have these emotions at one point or the other in your life. But it reminds you that there is an agency that can assist you. The Spirit of God. Show me a believer who sustains the mindset of dominion, the mindset of of servanthood the mindset 
of your humanity so that you are able to relate with your world and the mindset of a divine person in partnership with God. I show you one who has maximized the revelation that is captured in the mystery of the four living creatures. Because all those creatures, when you read your Bible, they chanted holy, holy. You know what it means to be holy? Complete. It doesn't just mean, it doesn't just mean um, um, the word holy there means same within. It's, it's a description of glory, integrity, integer, one, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That's what they said. So when you sustain that mindset, I have found this comforting in my own life. I am royalty. Nobody will preach me out of that. My words carry power. He's made me a king. He separated me out of every tribe, tongue, and nation. Are we together now? I believe that. But then I also realize that the purpose of his lifting me, the Bible says we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ unto good works. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, which God had before ordained that we should walk in it. Are we together? So I am called to serve and I will serve with all my heart. No matter how he lifts me, I am not only a lion. If you see a lion in me, keep looking. There is also a calf there. And if the calf is dead, I will cry to God for resurrection because I'm in trouble. I shouldn't be a lion alone. It was not the lion that was slain. It was the lamb that was slain. Are we together? And then, when you are stretched sometimes and your humanity shows up, it is okay to go to God and cry. And say, Father, I just lost a loved one. I just lost my job. And don't see people who are crying and expressing their humanity and say it's a shame. Are you not a child of God? Uh -uh. Sometimes the miracle is in allowing the tears flow. There is healing. That's why God gave tears. It's not a biological thing. There are tears that are captured in vials. If tears were a waste, they would not be in it, needed in heaven. Are we together? Yes. There are times it's in crying that people become broken, people become repentant. When you go to a place where people need comfort, even though you are an anointed man of God, at that point you need to be the man. We do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Are we together? It is dangerous to only be a lion. You can get somewhere where someone is saying, nothing is working in my life. He says it's a shame. Mm -mm. That's not how believers speak. There is a man in you. Remember the third face. Sometimes you just need to sit down to say, listen, let me tell you a story. When I started the work God gave me, I also failed five times, but I believed God. And the person can say, you mean it? As invincible as you look, you have used your humanity to project Christ. Jesus was not ashamed to hang on the cross. And then, in all your get in South Africa, do not forget the face of the flying eagle. So that you do not over pamper your humanity. You remember that I may be weak, but I am not alone. And you can call upon the help of the Spirit. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves, the Bible says, to think ourselves of anything but our sufficiency. So when God gives you an assignment, build me a people. When God gives you an assignment, the first thing is you'll be conscious of your humanity and say, Lord, I'm not able to do this like Gideon. But then you remember that every time he sends you, it is you and the Holy Spirit. You can fail alone, but you and God cannot fail alone. Did you hear what I said? You can fail alone, but you and God, you have failed alone in fact. But right now, be conscious of your partnership. And for someone you came to church to access the wings, that you will soar like the eagle. Rise up on your feet. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus.
when you look onto Jesus you receive from that portrait you are seeing the mindset of dominion the mindset of servanthood allowing your humanity to find expression and then knowing that you are always divine in partnership with the Holy Spirit turn this charge that I've said now to prayer in one minute as I finally speak over your life go ahead and pray a believer who has been blessed tonight go ahead and pray go ahead and pray Lion of Judah the Lamb upon the throne we hail you most high you're the Lion of Judah the Lamb upon the throne we hail you most high we hail Someone pray, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. I desire to actualize destiny. I desire to be a battle axe in the hand of God. The mindset of dominion, governed by the word, strengthened by scripture, empowered by light as a lion, roaring against the forces of darkness, and then as a calf with meekness and humility, by love serving one another by love esteeming others better than yourself and then your humanity not allowing yourself to be stretched beyond proportion then your divinity your partnership with the Holy Spirit one minute you are praying let it be from the depth of your heart house of treasures South Africa pray I pray for every man of God here. I pray for every businessman here. I pray for every man, woman of influence here that these four levels of consciousness, these four mindsets, dominion, servanthood, your humanity, and your divinity in the name of Jesus may begin to function in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ that you will know you are not weak you are strong but that you will never allow the consciousness of your strength translate to pride you will serve whether in ministry whether in government whether as a parent you will stoop down and serve with honor knowing that the purpose of power and authority is for service and I pray for you that when your heart is overwhelmed as a human may you be led to a rock that is higher than you when you go through seasons in your life like Job, where you cannot understand the things around, may God give you songs only you can sing. May God comfort you. Perhaps someone is going through a season right now, bereavement, maybe a loss of job. Something has happened that is eating into your humanity. I bring you words of comfort. You can be led to a rock that is higher than you. And then I pray for everybody like I pray for myself that you will learn tonight to maximize the ministry of the Holy Spirit for your profiting, for your greatness, and for your glory. Let me ask Apostle Felix to come up as I make the altar call. Please come, sir. Give me an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to lead someone to Jesus Christ tonight. Haven't heard all of the things that we have taught and haven't seen the power of God tonight in all of these dimensions it will be unfair to allow you go back home tonight whether you are here on site or online without making this decision for this Jesus I wish I had the time to teach on the seven dimensions one of the dimensions we would have learned was Jesus as the soon coming king you will need to see that dimension of him because if our hope is only in this life the Bible says we are of all men most miserable. I want to count one to five. Standing here with Apostle Felix, the angel over this house, to allow someone, just one sincere person, who is an apostle, I mean 
business with Jesus. And if you will give me an opportunity, I am not ashamed. I want to win this war of destiny once and for all. I will count one to five without waiting for someone to come before you come. Leave your seat and run. Do it for the sake of your destiny. Do it for the sake of your children. I begin my counting now. One. Let's honor them as they come. Come on, South Africa. Is this how you celebrate salvation? Two. Come. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Come. Young and old. Male and female. Come. They are still coming. God bless you. Keep clapping until they come. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved. I don't know the name of what I'm doing. I don't consider myself a bad person, but I'm not sure if I'm saved. Can I join them? Absolutely. You leave your seat and come to join them. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Come. Come. I see my dear sisters coming. Let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. 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 Hallelujah. If you're running to join them, please do so quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray that prayer so that I hand over the mic to Apostle Felix for the night. Let me speak to someone who is watching by way of internet. We're here in South Africa, here at the ownership conference, and we're at a very serious moment right now. We want to lead as many to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you are watching by television, you are watching by way of the internet, and you are saying, Apostle, I'm in my home, I'm in my office. I'm somewhere around Europe, America, the Caribbean, somewhere across the globe. Or perhaps you are even watching by way of rebroadcast. It is never too late to make it right with Jesus. As I lead these ones to make this prayer, I want you to join with hearts opened and mean it from the depth of your heart and salvation becomes yours. My brothers and sisters, thank you for making this noble decision. Thank you for giving me the honor of leading you to Jesus, the one who's changed our lives. Lift your right hand, if you will, and I'd like you to say this after me. Please say it as loud and as clear as you can and mean it from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. A miracle is about to happen to you. Say, Lord Jesus, Tonight, I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i'm a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen Father, I present to you these ones. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I decree and declare that the grace that keeps will keep you. Amen. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance even among them that are sanctified. And I declare the blessing of salvation that it becomes fully yours. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. All right, you just have one more thing that you need to do for us. We want you to follow. There is a brother right there waving his hand. We want you to go there with them. They need to take your details so that we can be in touch with you to help you maintain this decision. Can you just please go with them quickly just for two minutes? Please just go with them. Church, can we celebrate this precious souls? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Celebrate this precious souls. Keep clapping as they go. Keep clapping. Encourage them as they go. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just speak one blessing upon your life and we're done for the night.
in the name that is above all names everything you have seen in Jesus that is not yet at work in your life in experience I pray for you that from tonight the grace to see those dimensions revealed in your life if it is wisdom, if it is power, if it is favor, if it is rest, I decree and declare that every dimension found in the Christ that is not yet captured in experience, in your Christian experience and in your faith work, in the name of Jesus, let tonight be the night you have it working. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your life from tonight become a perfect portrait of the living Christ. Amen. That those who have not seen Jesus, unseen you, would see the revelation of Jesus in a very commendable dimension. Amen. I bless you. Amen. The Lord honor you. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Come on, celebrate. Come on, come on. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.